here. Uh, we do have a What Them Kids Doing Today on the program. That's Ooh. a good way to start the day, right? You want to start the day straight out the box with that? Go ahead, Tom. Let's just go ahead right here, right now. Let's just get it started with a little What Them Kids Doing. Hello once again, friends. It's time for What Them Kids Doing. Never that jibber jabber jeff with that kid rich. Hey, uh, who, who, who let you in here? Look at him. That big bitch locked. What the kids doing, Jeff? The commit to Florida State in the form of Blake Nicholson. He, a four star linebacker courted by many, including our chief competitor, Oregon, who has a lot of money and is willing to spend it on good football players, uh, on athletes. And he is one. Blake is a, uh, a talent two-way player out there in Manteca, California, and a good player that I've wanted for Florida State for some time. A couple of reasons, a couple of reasons. Uh, he's a linebacker, Tom. Sweet Jesus, we could use some linebackers. All right, let's go. Uh, not saying that our starters aren't good players. They are, but it drops off quick. It's been a minute since we had some depth at linebacker, and this is a kid whose body type, uh, suggests he could play pretty quickly here. When you look at him, um, he's he's ready to play football at a high level. And he said he's going to play that football here at Florida State University. That I'm really excited about. You can read an article, a Q&A uh, that he did with Michael Langston, warchant.com. It's there right now. I would direct your attention that way. But it's fun to come out the box with a little what them kids doing. Keep winning games, it gets easier to get yeses. Everybody knows that, that's for sure. And uh, let's hope there's another one on Friday, Tom, as we get excited about a certain receiver. Now, that's not cemented. We don't know that. But if uh, Hakeem Williams says yes to Florida State in the same week that Blake Nicholson says yes to Florida State and you win another football game and perhaps knock on wood, you're 4-0 right after those two commitments, my goodness, the start to the season would be as as solid, exciting, uplifting as one could have wanted before the year began. Oh, easily. Yeah, that would be one hell of a week. And also, you have um, a lot of concerns stemming from the Louisville game that appear to be not devastating, as they felt like they would be mm. when we were watching mm. the broadcast on Friday night. So, yes, most things at this time are coming up roses for Florida State. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let it wash over. Everything your feels it's it's too quiet. I'm sure that's how you felt when uh, your kids were a lot younger. It's very quiet. Yeah, babe. Who's destroying something in the back, away from eyes that uh, need to observe? Yeah, that's usually how I would I would suggest it be back then. But I I don't know, man. I um things are rolling in the right direction right now for Florida State, and I want to enjoy it. I want to celebrate it, and and you know as they say again. I want to uh, I want to be where my feet are. I want to I don't watch this and and get excited about the fact that Florida State has some positive momentum, doing some things right on and off the football field. The fan base can be excited for the first time in a long time. You get through this Saturday, you're actually going to have survived September unblemished. You will enter the month of October without so much as a wart you will be able to truly, truly exhale and say, screw you, September, we dominated you this week. It's like that time that you and I were playing recently and we both birdied the same hole. Oh, yeah. And I said, I suggested we should teabag this hole because we just because <laughs> we, we both just birdied it. And you giggled and we, we moved on. I guess I remember that. But yeah, <laughs> it was uh, 16 at Capitol, which it is was, not an easy hole to walk away with two birdies. We both birdied 16. And I said that, you know, you Walker hit a bomb of a putt, and I chipped in from the front right. That's right. Yeah. Neither one of us really were in position to make birdie, but no. we did. We did. Yeah. And I, that's when I got mad at the hole and told it what time it was. You did? Yeah, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> phrasing. I can't say what I wish I want to say because of phrasing. It's not, you know. Yeah. But you disrespected the 16. You disrespected I did. It. I disrespected the I was tired of the yeah. 16. Yeah. 16th has had its way with me many No times. damage was done to the It's no. just in the words. Oh, God, no. In the heard. words. Many yeah. words. Yeah. The worst words. That's right. Yeah, all the words. Uh, but it was fun. It was, it was, you yeah, know, that was that's nice. And anytime we're playing partner golf and we're birdie, and then that that's what I feel right now for Florida State out here, four and oh, perhaps 
getting yeses from important right key yeah. recruits that well help change the the outlook yeah and the whole thing too you know with with Hakeem I don't know that just feels like a recruitment and I'm not an expert by any stretch that might have multiple yeses and nos you know oh Randy I'm not Reeves. going yeah right no but, I'm but, not gonna submit I'm not gonna say okay well he's in the fold guys right. yeah but the more you win the stronger of a case you can make the night before signing day well, if the, you take to my meaning just let him watch Texas A&M and Miami play yep as he did this past yep. week that's that's the, a great recruitment for Florida State that's the product on the field I'm just saying when a final offer, best offer kind of phone calls happen, which is just going to be the norm the night before signing day for the rest of our lives. I'm going to I'm gonna suggest that there are certain calls that can be made to any top-tier recruit that we're after that we will not be able to match. And so I I hope there's more to it than just that because if, if that's all there is, we're not going to get a lot of these guys when we're in the running for them with a Texas A&M. That, nobody else will either. Now. If he is watching their receivers play in that offense, he's got to say, well, as long as Florida State gives me something substantial that's akin to what I would have gotten right, there, right. I've got I can't go here. This offense is ass. Look at Texas A&M's offense. It's awful. And and then you're watching Van Dyke and this Miami offense, which is a train wreck right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, man, that is our best recruiting tool. And yes. it's on the heels of Johnny Wilson going nuts. But the yes, of, yes. Well, and that's on top of the LSU performance where it looks like you can pass the ball in this offense, which is what we talked about coming off of New Orleans was this looks different to recruits. Like If you're a running back or a running quarterback the last year, you say, well, I could work in Mike Norvell's offense. This could work for me. Not if you're a receiver. Right, right. Which was the amazing thing of how he got as many receiver transfers as he did this offseason. Those guys aren't perfect. They wouldn't be coming to Florida State if they were. But still, if you get four receivers to say yes to Florida State, they're showing them the Memphis tape. They're not showing them the Florida State tape. But now but they now have they an can... opportunity. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of guys to get to here because it's funny. Well done, uh, Preston. And also FSU fan for the director. Director Whoa! Matthew, there you go, baby. Deserves a drink. We appreciate everything he does. 42-21 behind a monster rushing attack of the big three. And here's Johnny Wilson with a huge game of his own little contribution. Thank you so much, FSU fan. 1993. Uh, also correctly pointed out by Preston is that it is President's Cup week. Pairings get announced today. Preston, we find out pairings today. And you can bet I'm pumped about this. Um, this is a week in which the U.S. will dominate yet again. Uh, if you're just going by the world golf rankings, uh, out of the top 25 players in the world, the United States has 12, and the international team has three. Uh, this ought to be an ass-kicking. We have owned them in the foursomes. It's been ugly. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I'm excited about it. Preston, you and I will be watching closely. We know how to celebrate President's Cup Week. The rest of these bums are going to get uh, caught in the wash and watch some of these average football games while we're enjoying a riveting international ass stomping. Uh, it'll be good. It'll be good. Let's go, U.S. Get it done, baby. There was just some video of me listening to President's Cup breakdowns on the feed. I, I, I hope you caught it. I didn't catch it. Okay. Can you play it again? I, I mean, I could. I'd like to see it again. <laughs> All right. I want to see you. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh -huh. me. yeah, there, yeah. there's the President's that's, Cup analysis. That's, that's how you are. You probably want the international team to beat us. <laughs> yeah. Z-Chan writes, all right, Tom, you take off the Mets shirt Woo! and I'll throw in another hundo. You put on a Braves shirt, I'll throw in another 400. Well, Tom, I mean, we, we kind of share the money around here, sir. You, Woo! <laughs> I mean, you may that take one for the team. Uh, Z Chan, how much of I Hulkamaniac tear this thing? And then, a and then... friendly wager. We win the series <laughs> next week, and you have to wear a brave shirt. You'll, <laughs> you win. I'll give 250. Good Lord. I mean, okay. let's go, Mets. <laughs> let's go, Mets. So Aaron Judge hits home run number 60. You could last have been night. from Queens. That was really good. Oh, buddy, I was in there. I was ready to go. You've got to be the come on guy. Come on, get out of your chairs. Oh, I it's, hate that guy. That, I want to be that guy. That is in the blood of New York baseball fans. I, I know. Every one of them. 
So I'm so glad I went Get to, up. I went to bed last night not to watch the Pirates blow a four-run lead in the ninth and Will Crow's sorry ass giving up a grand slam walk off. Uh, but I I did I also, you know, saw Judge hit home run number 60 and a 9-8 Yankees win over my Pirates. Yeah. Pirates were bludgeoning the Yankees in the Bronx and then did what the Pirates do. I didn't think Judge was going to get another turn because I didn't think the Yankees were going to give up the lead oh, in the sixth because oh, they yeah, were well, ahead in the sixth. Oh yeah, but then they got they got run. Uh, it was yeah. it was impressive what the Buckos did. I'm sorry I missed that. And Z Chan, mm. no, I'm not. No, we could take the bet for next week, but I'm not putting on a Brave shirt. You, well, you can't I mean, buy Tom, my fandom. Tom, you cannot not be, buy my Tom, fandom. Let's not be hasty. Let's not be hasty. Of my man's throwing around four hundred dollars for the. For the two of us here, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you can just turn it away like that. Let's, let's think about the offer. Let's think about the offer before we're just dismissive out here. Hey, you know what we have today, by the way, on the show? Garnet and Gold Trivia. We'll have that today on the show. It's a tougher one today. Yeah, you ratcheted up the contest today. You wanted to be sure that it was uh, not as simple. These Well, guys are good, man. Uh and gals, I mean, the, the, the folks, that the diehard Knowles know their trivia. Every time we do this with an opportunity to win $25 gift card, a $25 gift card to Garnet and Gold, and you guys go over to the uh, message boards there, it's with the quickness that that answer comes in. It's like mm-hmm. usually some joker's like, Bada! It's it's quicker than you can even get your hands <laughs> yeah, on a keyboard. It makes me nervous about how technology is so instantaneous. That's how quick it happens. You're done with the final syllable of the question. It's on the message board. It is. It's silly. Today was a good day if you're waiting for the film to come out of practice to see the status of the quarterback. Now, we don't know anything official, but you saw the video. I saw the video. Everybody watching for that. If you haven't, you're about to. Well, go ahead and flash it up on the screen there. Uh, That is Jordan Travis dropping back without much of a hitch in the giddy up at all. Uh, This is more Jordan Travis dropping back without much of of, of the way of a hitch in the giddy up at all. And you're gonna see more Jordan Travis there. Eh, slight little, slight little uh, hitch there, but there he's jogging comfortably. It's only Wednesday, Tom. My I man, like this. My man feels good. I mean, I'm watching this video. It's not great radio, but guys, we're watching a video of Jordan Travis from this morning practice, and he's getting around pretty easily. Yeah, taking the coaching from Tony Tokars and mm-hmm. his dropbacks. He's getting into his dropbacks, which is important. So that means you can move backwards. One, two, three, four, five. You can move right, forwards. Turn, turn and throw. Yeah, it you looks can good. pivot. He was jogging into practice this morning. So, and Mike Norvell commented it was good to get him some work today. If you look at the practice observations on Warchant.com, which you can sign up for right now for just a dollar, that ends this month. So do so with urgency, please. You know, I I hate that we removed the mystery. Uh, you know, now we now know the time is up, guys. Now that's true. This life is impermanent. We know that you have to enjoy every aspect of it while you can. Things get taken from you. And now that dollar special is one of those things. It's getting taken from you. It's removed from your life. It's not the same as when Grandpa Henry kicks it, but it's still something that's being taken from you, man. It's a dollar and it's going to be gone. It's a buck. I'm going to miss that. It's a buck. We could have sold shirts for it's a buck. A guy for... yelled it's a buck to me in New Orleans. Yep. I was across the street, and I heard this guy yell out, it's a buck. That was Friday. I was with you that there day. There you go. Yeah. yeah. We were on our way to drink. We were. <laughs> we were on the way at that point. That was yeah, 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 it was yeah. more innocent time. Yeah. Well, we had had a, a roadie. Uh, yeah. We were walking. Uh, we, you you know. bought me my first drink on bourbon. Of it was very I nice did. of you. Well, yeah. well, of course I did. Yeah. I mean, who am I? Um, so, you know, I mean, we did that and it was good, good times. And then, uh, we proceeded to have more good times and the, the fun never ended <laughs> until, until we were driving back on Monday after a sweet, sweet victory. And then another victory followed, followed by what we hope is another victory. Cause three of them are in the back pocket, baby, get to four. And now you can see the seven win season, the eight win season. It's right there within your grasp. We got to ask an interesting question yesterday before we break. I want to I want to do this with you, Tom, because I thought this was fun to do. Seems three of them are very easy to come by. We all wanted eight wins. Like that seemed to be the number most four state fans settled on. Oh, I'd I'd like 12. But what we settled on as a reasonable, slightly high, but reasonably high expectation was eight wins, right? Nine if you're really feeling it and you get all the bounces and you have injury luck. 
And we have not had injury luck. Not at all. Well, we've gotten some bounces. A couple bounces, but we haven't had much in the way of injury luck. Now, that number of eight, if you win this Saturday, and you ought to, 16-point favorites at home against a beat-up Boston College team. Right when I begin to feel sorry for us, I think about their fans, all seven of them, and how devastated they have to be about Boston College's offensive line out here playing walk-ons, freshman walk-on. I mean, Jesus. But the point would be, name the, the four more wins. Say you get this fourth win here, name the next four. All right, so Georgia Tech, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a pretty easy one. Louisiana. That's another one. One so, would hope. Well, they just got beat again. Now, they're not any good. They're, they're, right. they're, it's falling off a cliff. I'm glad you're but, watching. No, I, I am. I'm betting and watching. Uh, eight and two <laughs> last week, guys. Eight and two. Uh, so so there's that. So those are two more easy, breezy mm-hmm. wins. Mm-hmm. Now, I need another couple. And it gets hard. Yep. Because the one that I was sure we could pencil in was Syracuse. Oh, nay, nay. I'm nervous as hell about that Syracuse game. Yep, and it falls in a tough place in the schedule. Well, and they're not bad. Just straight up Syracuse isn't bad, unfortunately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, They're undefeated too. So who are you grabbing? You're grabbing Wake and then who? One of your in-state rivals because they both look pretty sorry right now. Yeah, one looks worse than the other. Yeah, but both look... Gettable. Very gettable, yes. The game here against Florida is the answer for me for that fourth one. I'm saying Georgia Tech. I'm saying this weekend against Boston College. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, obviously, well, what did I say? Georgia Tech and then Wake and then, yeah, you got to get one more. Louisiana. Louisiana, right. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, Louisiana. And you're allowed to win one of the other four games, you know. Well, hell, you can win ten games, Tom. You can have a blast and really turn this into a party. I got you, but I'm just, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, Look, the practice footage we just showed of Jordan tells me, this is me only speaking, that the likelihood of Jordan playing for Wake is very high. No, I'm not focusing on this weekend. I'm saying for Wake Forest. I agree with that. Like, I mean, you're seeing him move around a day like that. I feel good that he's going to play against Wake Forest. I do too. That gives me a hell of a lot more confidence that we're going to win that game. It's not that Tate can't play. It's just if we are going to get into a shootout with Wake, let's just say that that's what happens. You get into a shootout. Is Tate ready to go toe-to-toe for a 40-burger? Can he go that far? Probably not. I know he gave us 20 and a half, so that's really good. But 40 in a game, you can with Jordan. You can play to 40. You can play to 50 with Jordan. Yeah. No problem. Listen, Jordan, I said this yesterday, and I did not waver. Jordan has played better than any quarterback in the ACC this year. There we go. Yes. And and well, Garrett I, Schrader might be in that top three. <laughs> I, I don't think that I'm going to uh, waver on that. I think he'll if uh, Jordan may play Saturday. It's looking more I mean, and more likely to me that he's going to play Saturday. Every time I see a video of this kid, it's like he barely has a, a limp. He seems to be fine. And it's, it's today's Wednesday. I think at that point, and that's where I think Aslan asked today's question yesterday. When he talked to Mike yesterday, he said, does it change the way you evaluate Jordan based upon how good Tate was? And And the question is essentially, if there's any lingering issue, would you hold Jordan because you now have a newfound confidence in Tate? Mike didn't like the question. He didn't answer the question, but I feel like <laughs> looking at, but looking at Jordan today, I, I would still, I still wonder what the answer to that is because would a week, would a week make a difference? He's moving around today, but would a week help him in a way that not well, playing wouldn't? We don't know the answer to that. The doctors well, will give, wouldn't? The, the, the doctors would tell the coach exactly what's at stake here that's really that's why it's an unanswerable question for you me and the fans right but i, I mean, love I, it for wake know. forest i love what i'm seeing for wake forest at minimum Without question at minimum yeah I, you don't need him this week but i mean again i'm not in i'm not interested in not playing my best players if they can play now i'm not interested in getting them hurt further than they already are if they if they need some time either so the doc's going to tell me the deal can he do more damage to this and risk missing two and three and four weeks Correct. if the answer is no to that he's fine it's it's he's got no ligament damage he's going to be fine he's just it's a you know a little slight strain then fine but if you're number five in the country and you're playing florida in the final week and florida's a threat and the answer is yes he could do more damage you might still have a conversation with jordan and say what do you want to do correct in, in this instance you wouldn't you even would, have, that you wouldn't have that conversation correct chef cambridge show 93 three real talk radio and war chant tv
If you're a business owner of any kind, you need Advanced Fire Protection Services. We are AFPS, and we provide high-quality life safety services throughout Northwest Florida, and we've been doing it since 1989, with offices now in Tallahassee. Fire sprinklers, fire alarms, fire extinguishers, hood suppression systems, and emergency exit lights. For all of your life safety equipment, we've got you covered 24-7. We are Advanced Fire Protection Services. For a free life safety system evaluation, visit WeSaveLives.com. That's WeSaveLives.com. Wit and Glass has been taking care of families since 1945. Experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best, like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass, and they provide precise installation. Widden Glass, Tallahassee's first family in glass. Online at WiddenGlass.com. Call 850-222-5781. So let's say you're considering buying a new home in the current climate. We've all heard that demand is high, inventory is low. So how do you get a leg up on the rest of the buyers all making offers on the same house as you? Oh, that's a toughie. But the first place I'd suggest you start is with a call to my friend Shannon at Legendary Home Loans. Shannon will set you up with a complete pre-approval underwriting. This used to be an upgrade, but nowadays it's got to be standard. You want to get your offer on a new home pushed to the front of the line, you need a TBD full underwriting approval from Legendary Home Loans. It'll shorten or even remove your financing contingency, and the sellers will know that your offer is real and ready to go. It's tough out there these days, folks, so why not have the advantage of a proven winning team in your huddle? Get pre-approval underwriting from my friend Shannon with the one and only Legendary Home Loans. Call now. 844-FSU-LOAN, 844-FSU-LOAN, or just visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 2270146. Imagine for a moment that you are completely weightless with zero gravity. All of your worries and stress melt away. Your mind stops racing and you fall into a profound state of pure relaxation. This is available to you right now at Tallulah Delta 8 Plus Floating in Railroad Square for just 50 bucks. These state-of-the-art floating pods are unlike anything else you've ever experienced. And while you're there, you can shop for some of the latest and greatest CBD and Delta 8 products on the market. Natural pain management, stress relief, and better sleep are all at your fingertips at Tallulah. Tell them Jeff Cameron sent you and thank me later. Every great construction project, whether it's a new addition or renovation, starts with a plan. At T-Spark, we are excited when our clients contact us to assist with that plan. Through our team of architects, draftsmen, engineers, we can help you with your project's planning and design, potentially saving costs in the long run. Whether you have a residential or commercial project, we look forward to working with you. Call us today or visit us at tsparkconstruction.com. License number CGC 1525336. Hey, no fans. Our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Dolphins. Bills at Dolphins, buddy. This weekend. Yeah, that's an interesting one. That's a great game. Dolphins. Is that the one o'clock window? Uh, let me double check it for you, buddy. That I think is it is. A, uh, well, my sheet doesn't have it. Here. Yes. Because oh, yes, yes. we are the uh, 425 window with the uh, the no receiver having Buccaneers against the Packers. 
yeah, half the team seems to be out for uh, for the for the Buckos. Uh, so we'll we'll have to see uh, exactly where that's at right now. I will uh, really quick as far as Florida State goes. So Friday, we mentioned a moment ago that uh, we'll know about whether or not they get yet another important yes on the recruiting trail, and that is scheduled, I think, for two thirty, Tom, for when we're going to be doing the show on uh, Friday. I think that's correct. And yeah. if that happens. Uh, we'll have to break in for you and we'll have it here for you. Uh, if I keep, well, he says yes to, uh, Florida state, then there's more reason to do what them kids doing and celebrate the hell out of it. Cause goodness gracious guys, uh, that's a get for the ages, but I agree with Tom that, um, may have a, a struggle on our hands. I miss the days where a commit was a commit. Now they were never 100% certain if you're, an old school listener to the Jeff Cameron show, you know that I invented the uh, recommit, decommit, the reedy re. The reedy re was a thing that happened over time. And we thought about, well, what is it about the definition of commit you don't understand? But it, it's kids. It's kids. I mean, the same thing. It's you and me committing to something. So we got, we got kind of accustomed to the commit, decommit, recommit. Well, it got so bad at times that it was a commit, decommit, recommit, decommit. The reedy re was born. That's how bad and wildly inconsistent these commitments have become over the years. Nowadays, you got to add another step in the process of the commitment, which is for now. <laughs> Just yeah. add for now. South Florida kids were the ones that made that the uh, most popular thing in the world, the reedy re. Yeah. Remember Irma Lane and Dalvin Cook? We ended up on the right side of this. We but, did yeah. end up on the right side, especially with Dalvin, because yeah. Dalvin was going to Florida. Yeah. That's a game changer. If I were a Florida fan, that would still piss me off. Because mm. <laughs> that was something. Yes, it and was. And he was special. Every time he played him. Yeah. Every well, and time he destroyed he played Miami, him. too. So there were all those. He's yeah. the reason we won the 14 game. That was Jameis' worst game mm -hmm. in a null uniform. Well, there was a lot going on. There was, but it wasn't even close, <laughs> yeah. you know, and Dalvin yeah. had to save the day along Dalvin with did, yeah. um, Terrence Smith. Right. As he limped his way across the finish uh -huh. line, I'll get there, guys. And he did. He I'll got get there. there. He did. Yeah, man, I just get him more, and I don't want to be the sourpuss who brings this up every time, but I think it's in the back of the mind of every Florida State fan or fan of any college football team in the modern era. If you get a player, a high-profile player that your team really needs, you're never going to be really comfortable at all until the man's taking a class on campus. Frankly, he has to. You have to see him on campus the first day of class before you're like, okay, it's real. I got to tell you though, just from the business we're in, that makes December traffic higher than it's ever been before. Bowl practices won't get you the kind of coverage that you know a signing day would. Yeah. When it it even the most surefire commitment the night before. That's the definition of what we went through last year. The most surefire commitment on the eve of signing day says no i'm going somewhere else yeah that one hurt that one hurt in a way that we won't get over anytime soon no florida state fan will it was uh the beginning of a new era in recruiting that involves the nil and it's a uh, uncertain um you know rocky ground sort of existence for these coaches and these programs and the bottom line is tom even then if you get a guy you can never really uh stop recruiting that guy if he goes the other way because if he, listen let's just say with travis hunter Who's to say he's not here in a year? Oh, yeah. Nothing's you know ever, no, nothing's nothing's ever, ever done. Nothing's no. ever done. Not at, not for anybody on the roster. No, because if a guy comes here and plays really well, and I don't know, let's say the room is stacked, guy sees, you know, an opportunity to be the every down guy somewhere else. Yeah, and these coaches, none of them, and I hope ours isn't either, Uh none of them are ever completely out of the picture with guys that they want to bring in. I don't care if the kid says no and goes to Oregon, you're going to call that kid. You're going to, yeah. you're going to reach out to that kid by some manner. Well, look, it, you know, part of your budget has to be about retaining your talent. It's, right. it, that's something that I, I know it's uncomfortable. People don't want to talk about it, but what if Alabama called Johnny Wilson this off season? Well, you know, well, if he continues not... down that path, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah, you've yeah. got to be yeah. in a position to where you can't be falling asleep on the, at the wheel like that. You have to be prepared for a re-up when somebody's on campus. That's just the way it goes. I think the hard part, though, and, and this, it it really speaks to 
the things that we love about team and about commitment and about you know the togetherness that's formed through hard work it's really the most untenable aspect of all this for fans because when you finally arrive at wherever it is you decide to go okay we we don't begrudge that you're getting offers from all over the place and that maybe things change i mean i i've tried to come at it from the perspective as i've gotten older as some, as somebody who has a, a kid in high school now which is weird for me to say out loud and and another one that's close to being in high school if they were in a position, no matter what it was, uh, it could be tiddlywinks, whatever it is, to where they were really good at tiddlywinks. It's a fun game. I've never played. What oh, the yeah. hell is tiddlywinks? Is it's, that the where you bounce the ball and you scoop things uh, up? That's you know, you like you, you pop them. It, it, I've never played. Yeah. So anyhow, let's say there was a market for that sort of thing, and people in schools wanted kids who were really good at tiddlywinks. And my kids said, you know what? I've always wanted to play tiddlywinks at Florida State. Uh, it is. It's going to mean a lot to me to play tiddlywinks at Florida State to don the garnet and gold and dominate the tiddlywink uh, landscape is where it's at. And then all of a sudden, after he's committed to Florida State, and we're beaming with pride, his mother and I, we get a call. And it's somebody from Temple. Right. J. And, Walter Tidley, and, the and, third. Yeah, whose son has carried on a grand tradition. And he says... We think Bryce has what it takes to be a tiddlywink champion here at Temple. And we're willing to pony up for it. Well, he's committed, sir. He's going to Florida State University. And they said, well, I've got $2 million that says he'll be tiddlywinking here at Temple. I'd have to consider the $2 million. What are you going to do? But now once you're in the fold. Oh, J. Walter Tiddly doesn't have a piddly amount of money for you. Once you are in the fold and you're tiddly winking with your teammates and you're sacrificing the, the, the kind of life you could have if you were just an average college student, but instead sacrificing with hours on end of practicing, perfecting the craft of tiddlywinks. If you turn your back on those fellow tiddlywinkers, those teammates of yours, you son of a bitch, it's not what you do. And that's why it's hard for us, because once you're in the fold, man, you can't walk away. It's just difficult. It's difficult. And yet, you know, that is the re this reality that we live in now. I'm sorry, Richard. It was J. Walter Tidley himself. What do you want me to do? It's the third generation Tidley master. Two million dollars to Tidley at Temple. So I'm just saying, I don't, with these recruits, I get excited. I'm glad we do this. I, I'm glad we have the, uh, what them kids doing. I just don't trust it ever, but I am excited today that you got a linebacker who I've wanted for a while in this process. And I don't really clamor for kids all that much. Look, this is why it's critical. You can't close kids if they don't like you. And so clearly we have kids who like us now and that's, that's important. They like us in September. They like us enough to commit to us in September. If you're talking about greater probabilities of sh uh, closing strong on signing day, these things have to happen. So as we're getting used yeah. to the new landscape, you can't close if somebody isn't committed to you in the first place or considering you as a finalist in the first place and we've got more high-quality kids with us in their finalist lists. I would tell you that, yeah, the building of relationships and obviously having the connections in the recruiting world with, God knows, handlers and everything else that you're dealing with now, NIL people and parents and all that. Yeah, you got to continue to foster those relationships and stick with it. And uh, from there, hope like hell that you don't get – absolutely usurped by somebody who is the grand master of tiddlywinks. It's the Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Your local news now. Jefferson County Sheriff. Three days, and his mother is now under arrest. The sheriff's office's Kyson Washington was found with his mother, Carly Soldier, hiding in an apartment at the Jefferson Arms Apartments in Monticello. The child was unharmed. Soldier was arrested on a charge of interference with custody. A U.S. District Court judge has denied 13th Circuit State Attorney Andrew Warren's request to be reinstated. The decision came after a nearly two-hour hearing at Tallahassee's federal courthouse. Warren was seeking a preliminary injunction to rescind Governor DeSantis's order suspending him from office, reinstate him, and stop the governor from taking any further action. 
action against him. DeSantis has been warned for neglect of duty and incompetence back on August 4th after he joined other prosecutors in speaking out against Florida's new 15-week limit on abortions and said he would exercise his discretion not to prosecute those cases. This is Rachel and A with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Clear skies this afternoon with daytime highs approaching 93. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Clear skies and quiet again tonight. Lows dip down to about 70. Ample sunshine expected tomorrow. High temperatures reach up to 95. Dry with temperatures near average. Friday and Saturday and highs in the upper 80s. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 93. Let's be honest, we all have way too much stuff. Maybe your storage closet is full, your garage is full, or the guest bedroom is a mess. Call Southeast Portable Buildings, 580-6400, or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. Your next chance to win $1,000 is coming up at 1 p.m. Don't miss your chance to shake the 93.3 money tree and see what falls out. Planted by the law offices of Basic Brooks. Come back stronger with Basic Brooks. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah, goodness. well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother, but, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true, but I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food, but I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. There's a TikTok that's going viral because of a butter softening method. They are putting the Vermont Creamery butter in the waistband of her pants. Give it five minutes, you can go and measure out your ingredients, and then your butter is ready to go. You uh. cannot do this in Florida. No. Because your pants will be full of butter yeah. in two minutes. Somebody try it. Post on TikTok. Tag. Unless it says juicy across the back. <laughs> The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameo, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Uh, Buster Posey has joined the Giants ownership group and is going to sit on the board of directors. I've always wanted to sit on the board of directors. Feels like you don't have to do anything and get paid lots of money just to kind of be around so that when they walk through people that have a lot, have a lot of money and are going to matter, they can go, oh, that, that's where Buster Posey sits in there with the board of directors. Does that come with a bonus that allows him to pay the Florida State baseball program enough money to build a new stadium? Well, I like the idea of the gazillions of dollars he's already made combining with now an annual salary to be on the board for doing probably nothing. That's a uh, It livens the chances that he does contribute uh, a little bit towards the new stadium. Because I'd be okay with meeting at the Dick Hauser Plaza at Buster Posey Stadium with Mike Martin Field. I absolutely you would know? Be. Yeah, that's fine by me. Oh, well, Pos I'm Posey Stadium sounds all right. Posey Park. Yeah, you got to keep Dick Hauser in some capacity. That was tragic what happened to Dick Hauser. Brain sure. tumor died. All I actually am old enough to remember Dick Hauser. That's something. That is something. Oh, yeah. Remember when he was in Kansas City. Um, so <laughs> Tom's like, what in the world? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Every now and then I flash that age on you yeah. where you're like, Jesus, you friends with YA Tittle Cameron? Well, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that to some of my younger friends where I say, I remember the last guy who didn't wear a helmet in hockey. Right. Like, what? You remember watching dudes who didn't wear helmets? Oh, all the like, time. Greg McTavish. Yeah, it happened the 94 all the time. Rangers. That's correct. Oh, and I remember an entire era long before then yeah. where they would never yeah. think about wearing a helmet. Right. They'd call you a certain word. That's right. And yeah. the same thing when they had they mandated the visors. That's like, correct. Visors are for wimps. Yeah. Or something like that. Something like that. Posey's only 35 years old. When we think about the Florida State athletes and their careers and the guys that have gone on to represent the university, have established themselves firmly as either a Hall of Famer or something close to one, 
and won championships, MVPs, were captains, did all of these. There are very few people from any school that have accomplished all of those things. And Posey, of course, three World Series rings, an MVP, uh, you know, all the, an all-star, countless, you know, all that stuff, right? 35 years old. I don't know that you have a Noel who's had a better post Seminole career and is also as well respected. It's critical that I bring that up. Yeah. As yeah. Buster Posey. Like Warwick Dunn would be close, close. In, the, in the, actually, he would exceed in the respect department, I think. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, because of what he does off the field. Yeah. But yeah. he doesn't have any P's. He doesn't have league awards. Doesn't you know? have Super Bowls. Right. Doesn't have, yeah. Right. Right. So it is. It's true. It's con it's combining all of those things. Um, uh, <laughs> he is, isn't he? It's the same difference, Life Spectator. Ty Cobb, <laughs> Dick Hauser, who gives a hoot? But honestly, I just Buster Posey is in the in the pantheon of three or four of the greatest seminal post seminal athletes of yep. all time. He's just unbelievable. He's a. And I like how you say he's only thirty five. First only, of all, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, because he's my peer. Yeah, he's I only, am only thirty five. No, but imagine. For a second, now that you're, if you think about it, your age, you've won MVPs, World Series rings, uh, you've been to count, you know, however, let me, uh, when you go, seven, eight all star games, all that stuff, hundreds of millions of dollars. Now you're on the board of directors with the Giants and you're 35. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, buddy. I can fully understand it. I've done the exact same thing <laughs> in the broadcast industry. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's, yes. I mean, thing. you'd get up in your giant mansion, what? one of your many giant mansions, and be like, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna wear pants today. Well, and the why thing, should I? The thing about San Fran too is there's a lot of variety of opinions out there, and everyone loves Buster Posey. I've universally got friends who are university uh, universally beloved. I've got multiple friends who are Giants fans from over there mm -hmm. that don't know each other, and they all they're not Knowles, and they're like, "Oh, Buster, I love Buster." They all love him out there. Hail to the Buster, one of the great chants of all time, one of the great songs of all time. And then in addition, when I was out in San Francisco going to a Giants game that he was playing in, bringing my dad, a lifelong Giants fan, we're driving up to the ballpark. Candles, no, not Candlestick, uh, whatever. It was. Yeah, Safeco at the yeah, time. Safeco at the no, time. that's no, Seattle. That is Seattle. What are you doing that? Just I don't know. Something. Um, but on our way out to that ballpark and thinking to our, it was like four different names in the last five Wasn't years. Wasn't it a key span at one point? No, that's not when I was going up there. Um, but when we were, when we were driving there at the gas stations along the way, you could, you could pull over and you could get little dolls of Buster Posey. It was awesome. It's currently called Oracle Park. I'll yeah. find you the name that we all knew it yeah, by. Yeah, that's the, it changes so often. The Pack Bell Park. Pack Bell. There Sweet Jesus. Yeah. That is a sign of aging from both of us. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. Good for Buster Posey. Congratulations to one of the great guys. And I'll have you know that Buster took the time to walk over and say hello to my father as we watch batting practice and welcome us to the ballpark, which I think is still number one on my dad's list. You've done a lot of awesome things for your dad. Uh, that he's That's a, no, a pretty good one. That's not bad. Oh, that was a good one. It was uh, his birthday week. Yeah, that didn't suck. Um, that that was. Uh, you probably probably won't be able to top that one, pops. If you're listening, don't know that I can do much better than that. There is a Noel who I can't recall, and I feel really bad about it. Uh, that works for the Giants that helped set all that up. But it was like a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend who was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. tell tell Jeff." Come on out. I never really got to hang out with him. It's, it's the thing. It's not like I hung out with him for an hour and don't remember his name. I mean, you could be sure if that were the case, I would not have brought it up here on the airway. <laughs> right. Yeah. This, this is quite risky, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. But it was it was cool. It's just there's knolls everywhere, man. There are. And it's a great community. And it's a community that is being rewarded with wins right now because whether they're in the baseball business or they're lifers for basketball, we're winning in, in football. The DMs light up the emails. Hey, man, haven't talked to you in 10 years. Or, yeah, you know, how's your the text? team? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going to win this weekend, guys. They're going to win this weekend. Ooh. And, uh, oh, it makes you nervous? No, I, no, it just feels good. That, that was a little shimmy. Yeah, they're going to win this weekend and get to 4-0. Oh, and, you know, it's, it's funny because I think it's very true what we've talked about since the Louisville win and really before the Louisville win. You go from an off season of predictions and projections and hopes and all of those things, and then you realize some of that by starting three and zero. And the team is, as we noted, very, very likable and 
hard work and sacrifice and toughness, all those things. So you're now emotionally invested to go along with sort of the standard. I hope my team wins investment that every, that happens every off season. Now you're, now you're involved. And I think, I think we're about to see the economic investment. I think people are going to be coming to the games. You're going to see this stadium look like it's supposed to look on a more consistent basis. And it's weird how it works because you shift from all of those hopes to the reality. And now you get nervous. Now you get nervous because there's something to lose. And I've talked about that a lot, but also, I mean, you get a little, uh, a little chutzpah to you too. When you look at a Boston college team to struggle to block Maine. And I watched some of this yesterday, Tom, going back just to look at how bad their offensive line is. It's awful. I mean, that situation for them, uh, Jerkovich, I feel bad for. I, I mean, I do. I won't feel bad for him this Saturday. I hope we sack him 15 times. But that's a that's a tough go for a kid who's probably going to the league. They have – you know how we found a way, Alex Atkins found a way to protect our offensive line a year ago from getting completely dismantled most weekends? Most wasn't, weekends. Wasn't great. A couple of games where you simply couldn't block people led to wild inconsistency, right? You weren't going to be able to sustain drives. Everything had to be like set it up, set it up, set it up, shot play. Maybe you get lucky on a wheel route. Maybe you get lucky on a, on a run that you've set up with the right angles time and again, and then you kind of buck the trend a little. You couldn't sustain drives the way we're sustaining drives now. Um, when you watch BC's line this year, Alex wouldn't have been able to do anything with that. There's just – at some point, you don't have the guys. And they came into the year behind the eight ball, and then they suffered even more in the way of injuries. I hate that for them, but that's the reality. And so I was asked this week already about, well, if Fabian doesn't play, if Verse doesn't play, guys, Maine was getting home on the regular in the first half of that football game. Right. Now, here's the question, though, for you. If Tate plays... If Tate plays, mm -hmm. and I said the number is seventeen and a half, a little oh, redemption Thursday man. preview. Do we cover? Because I want to, I want to understand the degree to which you're talking about. You're confident here. I, I'm very confident, and I think they would game plan this for Tate similarly to the second half of the Louisville game, that featured a bunch of RPOs and really one read plays. It was not Tate wasn't out here having to read defenses. Uh, I don't think they're going to complicate things for, for Tate. I would get his legs involved, first of all. Uh, but I, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't bet the game, Tom, if okay. I'm being brutally yes. honest. I 17 bet in the, the hook. I would, the defense is good. Yeah, it's okay. Their defense is okay. It's not a great defense. But it's it's an okay defense. It's serviceable, correct. Um, I wouldn't play the game. Okay. 16 and a half? Would it change you at all? Still wouldn't touch it because when you're saying we're going to win and they're off on the offensive line, I just want to know, are we talking 30 point beat down? Are we talking, eh, I mean, it could be a two score win. I don't like having to depend on a bet that I'm going to get a defensive score or that I'm going to have a ton of red zone opportunities because of the field position losses for BC on each drive. I said, I mean, I think we can reasonably project that that is going to be the case, but if you're asking me to put a, a number on a wager on how many points we're going to win. We're going to get in special teams and field position wins because of their poor offensive line and not being able to sustain uh, drives or flip the field. I don't like placing bets that way per se. So I probably just wouldn't touch the game, but I, yeah, I understand why the spread is what it is. And I, and I think if both teams play their best football, Florida state will win this game by more than three touchdowns. If both teams play their best brand of football, Florida State will win this game going away. I read you loud and clear. <laughs> you just don't want anybody else to influence the line. No, I just, got you. All they're right. a mess. Go watch right. them. Go watch them. They're a mess. I'm it's crazy. It, it is. We go. Yeah. Want to have more fun? How many kicks does uh, Fitzy make this weekend? Ah, uh, now that's an interesting question. Because I'd say I'd set the over under at five and a half. Because I'm including PATs, good sir. Those are kicks, too. Yeah, well, okay, how many field goals? Ah, the over-under is one and a half. He belted him through yesterday. I don't care. He didn't look good in practice the week before, but he belted I him through yesterday. I don't care. 
It, he's got the same <laughs> syndrome that we all have watching Tate. Like, but, okay. I agree. I'm sure but, he's made everyone in practice, guys. But here's the thing. Part of my take last week about, about being concerned with kicker wasn't just his history on the field in games. It was the practices looked rough, man. I was like, oh, no. This is not good. I don't know what he did today, though. I got to look at the options. Yesterday, he made everything. He did. Thunder. Don't care. Right down the middle. He could have made six from 60 and beyond, and I would have said, <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't mean a thing to me. The kid looked like he was about to cry on a 34-yard attempt. He missed a kick short in a dome from 47. Come on. No. Not so you're me. taking the under on the one and a half? I, no, I just, I'm, ah. no, no, I need him to do it. I need him to do it. Now, listen, last year, there is a stretch where he made a lot of kicks. That's correct. He made some kicks. Made some kicks. Made Even the kick big against ones. Yep. The, Notre Dame. Yep. And the big Q's. kick. Beat the Q's. Yeah. Big kick. Missed the one in overtime against Notre Dame, but you don't get to overtime without him making a kick. And he doesn't look he doesn't look the same. He looks like a guy who's like, oh man, you're asking me to kick. <laughs> it's the infielder who doesn't <laughs> want the ball. Oh, you're asking me to kick it? I don't I don't want to kick it. Mm -hmm. it scares me. Yeah, man. it's it's block at second base. Hey, when are we doing this trivia here? You want to do it? Uh start yeah. of the next hour. But you've got 40 seconds to uh, promo it if you'd like. Well, hold on. Raymond has a question. He asked if he missed an update on Jordan. Uh, we gave a pseudo update. It's not an official update. He's in full pass today at practice. You can see him in his dropbacks. There's video out on the interwebs. Uh, he's, he's able to pivot, throw the football. Look good. I don't know if he's going to play or not, Raymond, but he looks pretty good. And uh, when we come back, some trivia. Chance for you to go, uh, win a $25 gift card to Garnet and Gold. We'll do that. It's for Warchant.com members only. So join right now for a buck during the break. You got a chance at winning this baby. Football at El Jalisco. Football at El Jalisco. What a combination. It's a great big celebration. It's football at El Jalisco. They can dig it. Who's playing? Oh, man. Everybody. The ACC, the SEC, all the C's, and even the pros. The Bucks, the Steelers, the Giants, the Cowboys. Wow. Far out. You bet, man. When the game is on, it's on at El Jalisco with incredible specials on everything from frosty cervezas to salty margaritas. Uh, does margarita know? Dios mío, not again. The best place to watch the game is El Jalisco. College, pros, Monday night, Thursday night, you name it, El Jalisco is football headquarters. And with five Tallahassee area locations, there's probably an El Jalisco right around the corner right now. Physical stress in our bodies can take its toll as the years go by. Whether you're looking to get back into an old sport or just want to spend more time outdoors to explore all life has to offer in our beautiful city, the dedicated team at TOC is here for you every step of the way. You can trust TOC for all your orthopedic needs. And now, scheduling an appointment has never been easier. Just visit TeamTOC.com and click Schedule Online. That's TeamTOC.com. Over 50 years ago, when Paul Nicholson founded Paul's Termite and Pest Control, he had one goal in mind. Provide the best service possible to his neighbors so they felt like family. Your problem was his problem, so today it's our problem. Paul's service area is our home. It's where our kids go to school, where we shop, and where we get involved with community organizations. So if some out-of-town company knocks on your door and begins pressuring you to sign an agreement for termite or pest control, you can bet on a few things. Number one, you'll never see that person again. Number two, your technician is likely to change often. And number three, your money will not stay in North Florida. These companies are sending your money to home offices in Atlanta, Orlando, Salt Lake City, or even Great Britain. Paul's Termite and Pest Control knows local means something to you. The health of your Tallahassee home, family, and pets is our number one priority. For the elimination of termites and pests and a greener lawn, too, call your local company with local solutions. Paul's Termite and Pest Control. 
There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, Happy Hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee.
find the uh, find the show. All right, so come on in, come on in and join us. Tom, we're gonna do it right here at the outset, right? We're gonna do the right thing here and get get on with the getting with this contest. Oh, we can. Yeah, I think absolutely. we should. I teased it. I talked about it let, right before let me the get break. Get that thread and unlock it, man. Yeah. I have it locked down. You get set to unlock. Now I have not asked the question, guys. So you could randomly answer. That'd be great. I love random answers to a question that hasn't been asked. You could say people were close. In the uh, when they were the just first guessing. week, yeah, something was close. Most people were saying like William Floyd and things of that nature. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah, man. Here we go. Uh, let's get this thing fired up. The answer is not Ryan Sprague, but I I'm hoping he is doing well. He texts me every now and again, <laughs> and we are uh, still friends at a distance. Just haven't seen him in a long time. The trivia thread in the Tribal Council is unlocked. All right, so we're playing for Garnet and Gold twenty five dollar gift card, and it is a Warchant.com members only contest. So if you've not signed up for now. It is just a buck. So I would do it because Tom uh, really spilled the beans last hour. Probably going to get in trouble. Told everybody that the, the dollar deal is it, it's it. I spilled so, the beans. It's on live support. On, on You broke the news. I did not. You said it the first hour. I didn't I say I didn't break it. the news, old boy. You last said... night it was said during the, uh, the commitment video. So that's why I thought it was I out. Did, I didn't say it. I don't know. <laughs> on this show, you broke the news. Uh, you want to head to the Tribal Council if you're a member of Warchant.com and look up top for the trivia thread. And the first one who posts this correct answer will will win. And this is the question. $25 to Garnet and Gold. Uh, all right. In what year did FSU and Boston College play for the first time? What year featured the first head-to-head -head matchup between Florida State University and Boston College? If people get this fast, I'll be impressed. They might get it. They might get it quick. Are you studying that thread, Tom? I am studying the thread. The first huh. guess was Nicholson. Right now. <laughs> what player did we just get a commitment from? Good guess, my truth. Uh, a couple good guesses here on the chat. Won't count, but. Oh, we've already got one. How about that? And Bam! Once again, two people that are within just mere moments of each other. But we have the winner. Is... And the answer is, go. and then you can tell me who the winner was once I give the answer. Uh, the question was, in what year did Florida State and Boston College play for the first time? Again, which one, the matchup that is, was the first head-to-head -head matchup between Florida State and Boston College? The answer is 1957. In 1957, Boston College won in Chestnut Hill by the final score of 20-7. to I will bet you that game was as well attended as their most previous game. That seems about right. And there it is. 1957 Jagnol. Is that the second time Jagnol? I don't think so. I don't think so. Good job, Jagnol. 1957 is indeed. Oh, and right there below Jagnol is uh, Agnol. Agnol. I know. Agnol was so close to Jagnol. And we got we go by whatever the chronological says in the thread. So That's we're so sorry because you are you guys are synced up on time. Seconds apart. You look like the seconds DeLorean. Apart. You're so synced up. Jagonol edges Agonol and is victorious today with 1957. Sadly, a Florida State defeat 20 to 7 in Chestnut Hill. Old Chestnut Hill is lovely. Uh, not much for yeah. football, but it's it's lovely. The area there. Walking around those neighborhoods. Boy, I don't know what. Toity, toity as what's are. it going to take for the the trivia to go more than a minute? You know, am I going to have to go to the play by play of a game in in Florida State Wake history and say in the third quarter, second drive, who caught the first pass on Florida State's third? Yeah, touchdown yeah. How game? deep? How deep are you going to have to go? Because right? 1957 was pulled like that. Yeah, people. Well, I mean, that guy may maybe Jaganol went to the game. I bet not. No, I mean, I think Jagonol, if they're friends, if they're fans of the Jaguars, then they're probably relatively young, probably. Right. And then secondly, I would guess that they're just wicked fast on a uh, keyboard. People like me, Quizno. I'll clear my alerts when I feel that I need to clear my alerts. Appreciate it. It's kind of like you and your emails. My alerts for WarChan are in the hundreds. <laughs> it's just people liking the, the threads. There are also 
private messages, which I answer it in a timely fashion. Simpson, that's enough out of you. <laughs> I was not at that game. I uh, had I been there, I would have I would have broke it down for you, let you know everything that occurred. This weekend uh, is not a cat five. I saw some of these questions that popped up yesterday and the day before, and now it's on the thread here. I'm not going to – guys, it is not a Cat 5. It's Boston College. They lost at home to Rutgers. They lost to Virginia Tech, who's not any good. And they struggled for a half against Maine. This is not close to a Cat 5. Now, I get how pumped we all are currently undefeated Florida State with a chance to close out September unblemished. And there is reason, especially for those that are starving and finally have a meal, to celebrate the good fortune of Florida State football and where we currently sit. But let's not lose our minds and get skewed here as to our priorities or how things work. Category 5 games, as declared by yours truly, are not some willy-nilly nonsense just going to roll on in here and decide off the cuff, hey, it's a Cat 5. No, no. There has to be real meaning, a ton on the line. In many cases, this has to be uh, a nationally, uh, I think, desirable affair. You know, when two big-time programs get together, even if it's a – case where one of the programs is not historically big time, but currently big time because of their stout record or something like that, then we can make those kinds of adjustments. I can I can pivot in those moments and tell you that, in fact, oh, suddenly it's a big deal that we're playing Wake and uh, it's prime time and they're both ranked or something like that. I'll do that for you. But I'm not, no, I'm not kowtowing to this nonsense. 19. 57. Was the answer or 50, 57. 57. So bottom line is we're not. No. Uh, Noel Kev thinks Florida State will fall this weekend. <laughs> Matt Ryan throws for 300 plus. A.J. Dillon rushes for 100. And Keekley has 24 tackles with three sacks. Well Whoa. played, Noel Kev. Yeah, well, Luke Keekley most certainly could have 24 tackles at any moment in college football. And it just, it was real. It didn't, it, it preceded. The, the immediacy of social media, his performances, because we would have we would have seen it on Twitter and said, oh, it's real immediately. Instead, we went months without actually seeing him play and saying that's a fraud. What, what are they? How are they counting there to three tackles per play? And then you see him in person. And you go, oh, well, that how did he go to Boston College? That dude's unbelievable. Well, they had a series of guys who went to Boston College who looked just like him and played just like him. And uh, oh, it was it was rather remarkable. Here we go. Again. I'm just telling you, it did. It did. Hey. Uh, So I'm going to point this out to people. Uh, I got a text from a dear friend of ours. It's primed to issue the opposite of a Cat 5 maintain, issue the hurricane party and let people get all messed up. That's how I'll change that. Miss the game. Who cares? It's Boston College. (laughs) Issue Thunderdome. Um, Oh, my. Yeah. No, no, no. Let me me go back to this because Kenneth weighed in here, and I like that he disagrees with me. But I have a feeling that Kenneth was going to make this a Cat 5 regardless if we had a game this weekend or not. I would disagree. Our first chance to dominate an ACC team in seven years. I still love you, Jeff, but it's a personal Cat 5. Well, Kenneth, you were just searching. Like, wake it up on Saturday, man. It was a Cat 5 for you this weekend. You're like, oh, it's Saturday. Somebody stop me. Save me from myself. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, I mean, and I've been there, Kenneth. I know how it is, especially if you've been keeping it tidy during the week, all buttoned up, hitting the orange theory, eating properly, going to bed early. Next thing you know, it's Saturday. You're like, all right, it is on. I've done all the right things. There are no rules here. I'm not driving. Don't worry about me. You've got somebody down the hall that hear that first pop of the can. That, It's 8.42. Cameron should have issued the Cat (laughs) 5. It's his fault. I told him. I told him. Got some pasta in you, Kenneth? Drink lots of water? 
<laughs> You've never recommended pasta before. <laughs> Thank you for adding that to the lexicon of the Cat Five. <laughs> you gotta get some weight to you, man. You're about to get get crazy. There are. This is the week where it's revealed to me how uh, how hurt we've been as a fan base. I have got so many people out, outright angry with me for being somewhat dismissive of Boston College. I'm not telling you we're we're you know guaranteed to dominate the game. I didn't even give a score that was outrageous. Uh, Aslan asked me to give a score for this week in one of the videos we were recording yesterday that'll come out, I think, tomorrow on warchant.com. And I, I think I said like 27 to 13 or 10 or something like that. Okay. I mean, like, All right. so you're looking at the number. Yeah, I was looking at the number, but I was just kind of like, I think it's going to be kind of a boring game. I think we might be. At that time, I was of the mindset, frankly, that Tate was going to start. And not that I have any you know problem with Tate. If we get the second half, Tate, that that's great. Four State should win. I just thought we would call the game safe. Right. We would try to dominate the Run game. Run the hell out of it. Shorten the can. game by yeah. running the ball. Yeah. yeah. You know they're going to probably win the field position battle, and you know. And but, he still very well may start. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, he might. He might. It's uh, yeah, but I I don't think it's um. I don't know. I don't think that uh, at this point there is any reason to believe Florida state is going to somehow fall back into some of these performances we've seen that devastated us. Those teams were not made up like this team. Those teams, a weren't as good as this team for starters. And it, uh, either was, by the way, several of the players will be, de- de- you know, be depending on, on Saturday. Um, if Jordan Travis plays, he's a different Jordan Travis than he has been each of the last two years. Jordan Travis looks like a guy who has taken total control of this offense. That's another reason I really want him to play. I want to see these numbers, Tom. I want to see what this guy finishes with this year. I mean, I, I he's in contention for some major awards in the ACC at the very least. Uh, you know, I, of, of the quarterback play I've watched right. this year, Jordan Travis has been very, very good. Well, and that's the other thing is you're only getting into your national window part of the schedule. You know, when you were doing handicapping last year of, I uh, forget who it was, but you're looking for a dark horse candidate in the Heisman race. Well, who's yeah. going to be on national TV at, at, in November? Because that's going to help you along the way and maybe push you over the push finish over the line. Edge, yeah. Well, for Jordan Travis, he is a fun story now for people who are diehards of college football. But look, the next three weeks after this one, you take care of business this weekend. If you do, if I F, you got Wake, NC State, and Clemson. At least two of those games are going to be in a national window of some kind. It could be the 330 window, whatever, but it's going to be on a lot of TVs, not just in this region of the country. Two of those games. Yeah. And if he performs in at least two of those games like he he has so far, he's not going to be a college football diehard name. People are casual college football fans are now going to know who Jordan Travis is before we play Miami and before we play Florida. And that would put you in a place where, like you're talking about, you could just make finalist lists. You know, ACC player of the year, whatever. Those types of awards, absolutely. Yeah, he could. And I want to see him get the opportunity because he's worked really hard. And uh, just as long as he's healthy, man, it'd be fun. I, I'm I'm knocking on wood here that he gets a chance to play this weekend. It'd be great if he plays really well for a half even. And then you, you're able to get more run for Tate Rodemaker. I mean, that continuing to develop him is a high priority, uh, I believe. Uh, ah, here's a question for you. Did the second half of Friday's game make you feel better about next season? Yes. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, I've gotten so tired of watching that kid play so well in practice again. Uh, that's the age old story, but and think, well, God, dog, we're not going to get anything out of this guy. It's just not going to happen. Cause I, you know, listen, I'm, I'm mad at, uh, I'm not mad at this person, but I'm saddened that it does appear that we're never going to get anything out of Travis J. It's become a running joke to the fan base. Not not at his expense, just like so many people ask about Travis right. Jay all the Can time. He kick. Right. If you don't have a punter, you don't have a kicker, you don't have a backup quarterback, you don't have a running back, you don't have a tackle. People say, oh, could Travis Jay play that? Yeah, because he's a great athlete, and we all know that. But at this point, I think we all feel like, eh, he's never going to do anything here. And actually, I think you're right. He's never going to do anything here at this point. I don't even consider him. Yeah, what stinks, And it makes me sad for him. What stinks is I, I feel like, and this is, this is very video game-ish of me, but when you move Brendan Gant, 
from the secondary to yeah, linebackers, you, everything. Yeah. you would think that Travis J might be a candidate to do something similar, and they don't see it for him. So that, you know, because they clearly need the help. They pulled Lundy off the field and played Gant in a 4-3 set in the, in the second quarter of this and game. Gant is playing good football. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Relative to expectation okay. when yeah, the sure. move happened. And the special teams, absolutely. He is if too. you couple all that he gives this team, Mm -hmm. in a pinch, and then on special teams. Oh, they found a role for him. No, yes, And he's accepted it and played hard and played well. Yeah. I think that he's to be lauded for that. Because, uh, let's be honest, we thought Brandon Gant's time here was... Same thing with Renardo. Was, and Renardo's right. your most important corner. Well, he's this, your best you know, corner. Yeah. Until right now, further notice. Right yeah. now, he's your best corner. Although I saw a rep yesterday with Amarian. I put it in the practice observations. Is he finally... Seven on seven here? rep, one on one with Johnny. He gets super physical with Johnny in the open field and breaks up a pass. There's an official there who threw a flag later. He did not throw a flag on the play. One might have been warranted, but I love it. You're going against Johnny. I'm did not going to get this, him. Did you say this was Duke Cooper? Yes. Yeah. Well, what the hell, man? What? <laughs> I, I don't understand. What is going on with that kid? Because I just assumed he's hurt. He's playing like four to five plays a game. Mike has said. And now we're out here practicing our ass off. What's going on? Mike has said he's hurt. He was extremely limited uh, on Friday. He That was on record. If you're hearing this right now and you or someone you know is active military, a veteran, police officer, firefighter, nurse, or a teacher, listen up. My friend Shannon with Legendary Home Loans has a hometown hero loan program designed to make a difference to those who make a difference in their community. When it's time to buy a new home, they'll waive all lender fees for all hometown heroes. That's over $1,600 right there in value. And if you use their preferred title company for the closing, you save another $600. So now we're up over $2,200. bucks. Good stuff and discounts right there. That's uh. It's a lot. And so it is that I remind you that if you or someone you know is active military, a veteran, police officer, firefighter, nurse, or school teacher, and you're looking to buy a new home, reach out to my man, Shannon Young, Legendary Home Loans. Ask about their Hometown Heroes program, 844-FSU-LOAN. 844-FSU-LOAN is the phone number, or you can always visit FSUHomeLoans.com. That's FSUHomeLoans.com. Hey, this is Greg Tish. Here's something you might know about me. I, I don't drink coffee. I have never had a cup of coffee in my life. Well, that is until now. So why change now? Oh, it's because my dear friend at Grassroots Coffee reached out to me after hearing me say that and insisted that I give his product a try. I've been making a huge mistake. The world of coffee is fascinating. I always thought coffee is coffee, you know? It, it, well, it, no, it's not. I have tried their coffee and it is fantastic. Now, I've got a fascination with learning more about the best coffee in our area. Grassroots Coffee is locally roasted, locally owned, and locally loved. You can find whole bean grassroots coffee on the local aisle at Publix, also in Whole Foods. But the best way to get this black gold is to order it online. They literally grind the fresh roasted beans to your preferred level, bag it, write the date on it by hand so you know the exact day your coffee was roasted. It doesn't get any more fresh than that. Order yours now. Just go to grassrootscoffee.com and choose the coffee you want and how you want it and join me. Let's step up our coffee game together and also support a great local business. Sellers Tile does it better for business owners, contractors, designers, and homeowners. Better design ideas, better quality tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring, better mosaics, ceramic, and vinyl solutions. And Sellers makes it easier with their amazing showroom and first-class professionals. Maybe it's time to get Sellers working for you on Capitol Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhand Drive, or online at SellersTile.com. For better style, quality, and design, go with Sellers in Tallahassee. Call 656-8453. Hey, no fans, our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Hey guys, it's Greg Tish. I know it's still warm outside, but the Hearth and Patio wants to remind you that the cooler temperatures are coming. They will be here shortly. Now is the time to get those fireplaces inspected, get those fireplaces upgraded, or get a new fireplace for inside or for out. Or how about a wonderful fire pit to have out in your backyard where you can enjoy the cooler temperatures when they finally do get here. And yes, they will get here. Call my friends at Hearth and Patio today, 850 727 4282. That's 850 727 
or 282. Have them come out, inspect your fireplace, tell you about the upgrades, tell you about all the amazing ways that Hearth and Patio can make you feel comfortable when the cooler temperatures finally get here. That number again, Hearth and Patio, 850-727-4282. That's 850-727-4282 or online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Hearth and Patio, they keep the home fires burning. If you're a business owner of any kind, you need advanced fire protection services. We are AFPS, and we provide high-quality life safety services throughout Northwest Florida, and we've been doing it since 1989. With offices now in Tallahassee, fire sprinklers, fire alarms, fire extinguishers, hood suppression systems, and emergency exit lights. For all of your life safety equipment, we've got you covered 24-7. We are Advanced Fire Protection Services. For a free life safety system evaluation, visit WeSaveLives.com. That's WeSaveLives.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. Seventy first, twenty first. That's just one man's power rating. That's not your proprietary. That's not my proprietary okay, grouping right. of nine power ratings. Right. No, I'm sorry, is, I don't trust it as yeah. much. But I did look at some others, and again, it would seem to me weren't we twenty fourth in your proprietary power ranking? Yes, I had us at twenty fourth in the power. Do ratings. you go beyond fifty to have a Boston College number? I've top one hundred, Tom. Some do more. Some do more. Is BC in the seventies for you? Seventy eighth. See, I like that better. Yeah. <laughs> 24 versus 78. Yeah. Quick math. My 54 yeah, spots. I like power that. Power rating solid. Hey, I also wasn't the only guy who laughed at Mario Cristobal this week and uh, over the weekend. Uh, I did see a collection. I was reading an article, uh, college football page uh, by uh, Acosta there at uh, SB Nation, I think it was. And he grabbed a few of the um, various sites that cover college football, various folks who do. All commenting. I'm glad I didn't tweet this out, or else I would have been one of the many. Noting that Cristobal's game management is an embarrassment, but it's awesome. I'm glad he's that guy because he does recruit pretty well. So I need him to screw it up on the field once he gets him there. Also, we can use that. We can continue to use that. Also, by the way, uh, remember we were talking about players in the NFL, for example, that we pay money to see that, uh, I mean, Josh Allen is my guy right now where I'm like, I can't, I can't stop watching this version of Josh Allen who emerged last year as unstoppable and has now carried this over. Some of those throws, you're just like, well, that's just the silliness, silliness. Brock Bowers is that guy in college football oh, yeah, in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. You got to be kidding me. That's a freak of nature. All I've seen are the clips and the highlights, but I can't wait to watch the subtleties too. It's, yeah. He just abuses people, and it's it's an unfair game that he's playing. Um, you know, you get guys that are just brutalized, and in the era of uh, social media, at least it won't be hard for you to find. After every catch, he either trucks somebody, embarrasses somebody, it jukes somebody, or more than one person, or makes some catch that you think, well, that's not even possible. How the hell did he make that catch? That guy every week, every week. Is fun as hell to uh, to watch play football. Georgia has been, for now, the most wildly consistent and uh, best team in college football uh, through the early stages. I would, I would, I would say this. Uh, I was playing a game, buddy of mine, Pat Burnham. You guys uh, works in the industry. 
Uh, we were talking about if if you expanded to a 12-team college football playoff, Tom, uh, you know, you could name probably, what, eight teams right now that you feel really good about getting into a 12-team college football playoff this early in the season? Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about who would make the field, not who's a title contender, because that list right, is... Right, right, uh, just a field of 12. I think that's one you, team deep right now. If you did, If you did 12... You know, you you. I think it would be interesting, right? The you would come up with eight pretty easily. You would come up with Ohio State. You would come up with Georgia. You'd probably come up with Clemson. Yeah, Bama. Uh, Bama. You'd probably come um. You'd come up with maybe uh. If we're going twelve, you might come up with Michigan and Southern Cal. Michigan. I I look forward to them playing a team with a pulse. Right. I don't know if Maryland qualifies, but they will be in the next two to three weeks playing teams with pulses. Kentucky. Yes, would make it right now. If you're talking about an eight team playoff, they 12 have... team, 12 teams. I said you could make eight. Yeah, you'd pick eight. The other four would be iffy that you wouldn't feel yeah. real good about them. You wouldn't feel now. It's even a better game when you're just trying to predict the college football playoff of four right now. Because right now it's Georgia mm -hmm. without question. Affixed. I don't know that you are entirely certain Alabama's going to get into that. I, I think you'd pick them. They might by default. They might by default, you know, and if they don't win the SEC championship and they've got two losses, it'll be close. You'd take Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State. Who's your fourth that you would feel real good about? You'd write down Clemson? I don't think so. No, I, I wouldn't feel good about anybody right now. I, I think that's – if Utah had beaten Florida, I would put Utah in that conversation maybe, right now. Maybe, yeah, maybe. But, I mean, Oregon is, has rebounded nicely from mm -hmm. the bludgeoning they took to Georgia. USC's, USC's a threat and their defense isn't great, but yeah. their offense is awesome. Um, when you think of the big 12, I mean, I, I'd like to believe Penn state has a chance to get in there. I, over Ohio state. No, but Michigan. Well, I mean, they've got the opportunity against Ohio state to prove their metal. You know, if they win that Ohio state still gets in. So yeah, they don't you know. Yeah. Penn State could get in on the strength of beating Ohio State. If Ohio State only has one loss, Ohio State would still get in. We know that precedent has shown this. And there's nobody out of the Big Ten West, if you will, that you're going to be like, oh, they'll rise up and win in that right. championship game. No, yeah. Northwestern, Liza. Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, Purdue, Nebraska. Nope, no, nope, no, nobody, no. nope, 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 nope. Nobody, nope. Yeah, there's none of those. Don't feel good about Oklahoma. No. Well, I mean, easy killer. <laughs> They've looked very good. I don't know where you're going. Getting old Getting old Congratulations. Well, listen, they're three and oh, Tom, not one and oh. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> so let's go easy there. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe a Big 12 champion would make it if it's Oklahoma. Yeah. Well, if it's an undefeated Big 10 champion, Kansas, big, big 12. Sorry, Big 12. Kansas is going to score their way there. I mean, if you're NC State, you're sitting at you're not getting in the college football twelve playoffs. and eleven in the AP and the coaches' polls, mm -hmm. respectively. Mm -hmm. You're you're within striking distance because if you handle business and you beat Clemson, you're on your way. That's what you're thinking right now. And I'm not talking about us thinking that way. I'm saying if you're it's in hard. prime position here, because who else is in the way? It's hard if you as hell win to your pick games, four teams, right? Though. It's hard as hell to pick four teams. Shoot, man, we run the table. We're in the playoffs. Well, <laughs> yes. We weren't able to say that the last five Septembers, six Septembers. Let's say it now. You know they're always inclined to want to give a, another SEC team a, a shot, but honestly, A&M's got no chance, and they were a preseason uh, yeah. dark horse pick. Uh, it's an elimination game for A&M and Arkansas this weekend, I think. I did too. That's a playoff game already. Because Arkansas is not going to beat Alabama. So, Could Kentucky finish second in the East? And only lose one game. Second to who? Tennessee? Georgia. Oh, duh. Sorry, forgive yeah. me. I've got Georgia like in this <laughs> other, other place. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, they don't deserve a division. <laughs> they are their own division. Yeah, no, they could finish second in the East. I'm going to pull this up for the Fighting Mark Stoops. They play Northern Illinois. They'll win that game. Now, they've got a biggie coming up after that. If they beat Ole Miss at Ole Miss. I think they'll beat the hell out of South Carolina. They'll beat Mississippi State. Tennessee's a good game. They'll beat Missouri. They'll beat Vanderbilt. Man. Oh, man. And Tennessee's in the middle of a lot of stuff this year. Yeah. Because they well, play Tennessee, Florida this week. That's 3.30 this weekend. Then they go to LSU. Then they host Alabama. 
I mean, it's a more gettable version of Alabama as we know them right now, correct? And that game, that place is going to be nuts. I know. Then they have to play Kentucky and Georgia back-to-back weeks. What if Tennessee did not come out of the East? They were 11-1 and with a loss to Georgia. Tennessee would be in well, Tennessee because that would include wins over Bama and Kentucky. They'd have to be in. And a big one over Pitt. That's right. They're not getting in, Tom. Don't worry about that. No, but you're yeah, just yeah. trying to find you're trying to fill the gap because you're asked the same question about Kentucky. I'm just saying yeah. Tennessee's resume would be absolutely worthy if they didn't make I'm it to the title excited. game. I'm getting excited about Kentucky a little bit. I'm I'm rooting for Mark here. And by the way, do you think Welcome it, aboard. Uh, this train has been empty for a long time. Let me ask you a question. What's the better job? Mark Stoops choosing to stay at Kentucky or accepting the Nebraska job? Stay at Kentucky not even close it's not even close well now hold on i understand why you'd say that because expectations are relatively low at kentucky if you win seven to eight games a year and go bowling and you know no, it's not just about what is between those two because kentucky opens up other doors for you down the line if venable sucks at oklahoma you, you you're stoops you're going to get the call to go coach Oklahoma, and that's a far better job than Kentucky. Venables is going to be there a little while, though. So what if Nebraska calls you right now, says you're the head man, take it over. You understand the tradition here. You get it. Mark had to build Kentucky. I know. He could build Nebraska. Look, if Mike failed here two, three years from now, you know, he got to set the table, and Mark continues what he's doing in Kentucky. You call him. Yeah. Yeah, he's the guy I wanted to call before Mike, but hey, good things are happening right I br- now, I bring so it's this, okay. I bring this up because you guys know from listening to this show, I do some stuff with Nebraska these days and some other outlets, and I just it's funny to be involved in those conversations with their insiders. I'm not a Nebraska insider. I'm learning more and more about it. I'm over there all the time these days. But Mark Stoops came up in the larger conversation with one of their major boosters, one of their money guys, and they like Mark Stoops. And I'm not saying that they're offering Mark Stoops the jobs, but he's a name that Trev Alberts would talk to. They should. Absolutely. Lance, Lance Leopold of Kansas is another huge name. Now, obviously, the fan base does what all fan bases does. They immediately root for Urban Meyer. Now, I, I'll give Trev Alberts credit here. He not so subtly laid down the law with, I want a man of character when asked that question. So he's basically saying, no, yeah. it's not going to be Urban Meyer. He's saying, Meyer. fire me if I hire Urban Meyer because yeah. I'm a complete hypocrite. Yeah, he said, I'm not going to hire Urban Meyer. So it's not Urban Meyer. But you look at program builders who get it, and, you know, Mark is one of those guys. Now, if you can win, Lance Leopold's won at Buffalo and now Kansas. Sweet Jesus. I mean, there's some magic sauce going on with old Lance. Yeah. I mean, and his offense is score on everybody. I mean, I, it'd be hard not to hire him if you're them. I think that's the best you can do right now, unless you wanted to sell your soul. Because Urban wants off the desk at Fox, you know that. He's just standing there with a blank look on his face. They don't even ask him questions. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It's the best thing Fox has done in a long time. If I was Mark Stoops, though, I would wait because it's the asset of the next gig. Because if you go to Nebraska and you fail, now Oklahoma's not calling you. We still might, but Oklahoma's not calling you if that's the gig that you want. So Kentucky keeps your options open for other big-time jobs. Also, I think he's got to be very, very proud of what he's done there. I mean, they are now arguably the second-best team in the East, and the problem is, if you're at Kentucky, you're at Kentucky. You're, you're not beating Georgia, not anytime soon, and you're certainly not going to consistently compete to win an SEC title. So you've hit your ceiling if you're Mark. And that's where I say sometimes you jump ship because the guys built them to a place where they might go to – they may win 10 games this year, right? 10 and 2, something like that seems possible certainly for Mark this year. It won't be the first time he's done that at Kentucky. And, you know, you're not going to you're not gonna be better than Georgia – and you're not going to beat Alabama most years if you did beat Georgia. You're not going to win the SEC. So you're done achieving. You, now, you're proud, and you're making a lot of money, and your fans love you, but if you really want to win a national title or you really want to win something of your own, I know you'd say, look, is he going to win a national title at Nebraska? If you built them back up to, to something akin to what they were, you could win the Big Ten, and thus you could win a national championship. Yeah, maybe, but I'd say the one thing is we've already moved the goalposts for Mark Stoops. Because when he first took the job, we said, you're never going to beat Florida. Well, he now he's beating Florida. It's and you're never going to win years. 10 games. You know, eight and four is all you can do. Get out while you can. Yeah. Now he's going to push for 10. Well, he already just, has won 10. Yeah. And they have money at Kentucky. So yeah, man. he's moving the goalposts there. Now, I would still leave, but I wouldn't leave for Nebraska. You've got a much better, more secure gig. Would you leave for Arizona State? No. No. Once proud program <laughs> in a nothing conference, buddy. Where are they going to be playing here soon? 
The Pac-12. What's left of it? USC takes it to the Big Ten. You go rule <laughs> the Pac-12. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to find options for Mark. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chat TV. Your local news now. The Florida Highway Patrol responded to a single car crash Tuesday morning on State Road 71. The driver was traveling on Northeast Flatwoods Road around 7.25 a.m. when she failed to make a right curve and drove across the center double solid yellow lines and onto the south shoulder. When the driver attempted to overcorrect, the vehicle overturned and landed on its roof. Due to the crash, the driver suffered serious injuries and the two passengers had minor injuries. On Tuesday, Governor Ron DeSantis announced new family-focused tax relief proposals. The proposals include some permanent exemptions and some that last for a year. The governor Governor said in next year's tax relief package, the state is going to work with the legislature to create a permanent sales tax exemption on baby necessities. He said the state is also going to propose a permanent sales tax exemption on all cribs and strollers. The governor is also proposing permanent exemptions on medical supplies and over-the-counter pet medications. This is Rachel and A with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update. Brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. <laughs> This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Clear skies this afternoon with daytime highs approaching 93. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Clear skies and quiet again tonight. Lows dip down to about 70. Ample sunshine expected tomorrow. High temperatures reach up to 95. Dry with temperatures near average Friday and Saturday and highs in the upper 80s. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 93. Let's be honest, we all have way too much stuff. Maybe your storage closet is full, your garage is full, or the guest bedroom is a mess. Call Southeast Portable Buildings, 580-6400, or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. Your next chance to win $1,000 is coming up at 3 p.m. Don't miss your chance to shake the 93.3 money tree and see what pulls out. Find it by the law offices of Basic Brooks. Come back stronger with Basic Brooks. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah, goodness. well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother, but, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true, but I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food, but I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tiss Show. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Pastor Tabner was alone with a female church employee. Oops. She and a towel, and he and his boxers. The charismatic 41-year-old Hurley explained the two of them had been making chili and gotten food on the floor. <laughs> With the hot dogs that they were making, we are hoping that the pastor used the right condiments. I think it was at least one hot dog involved. I don't know what you're talking about. We were just making chili dogs. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jammin' Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. with prize picks is an exceptional one and uh i value it greatly and i like Indeed. winning more importantly well, i struck out <laughs> over the weekend did you yeah well o- old we russell any- wilson didn't throw for anything it was like 210 yards yeah it's something to behold isn't it watching this uh russell wilson led uh denver broncos offense not real good it's mr limited oh, not mr man, Unlimited. i'm never gonna do it again very limited uh, Noel Kev writes Harson to Nebraska after they fire his ass. Stoops to Auburn. Well, Harson, yeah, and thank you for the contribution. We've got uh, a few more to catch up on after this. Okay, Harson will be fired. That is true. Penn State insured it. <laughs> a little, little ass beaten um, that we saw coming. And uh, the Penn State running backs are fun to watch the single kids really really good go ahead and throw out those other contributions so i take care of folks eric thank you man 52 to 14 he doesn't care who the quarterback no he says tate or jordan doesn't really matter thank you eric appreciate it as always buddy and 52 to 14 wouldn't that be nice 
FSU Fan 93 back at it. If college game day comes to town, a sign should read JT13 fighting out of Flea Flick of Flola. Yeah, 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 that'd be good. Woo! Van Spike. FSU fan 93 again. Our stadium is a named for a casino playing here is a huge gamble. Um, yeah, he's talking about the fact that uh, Van Dyke said that he likes playing road games more than he does at home because he doesn't get the college atmosphere when they play in Miami. Well, that is correct. Yeah. Whoops. It's a fact, but I don't know that you want to say that. Was that Carson Palmer's podcast? I think it was. I don't know, but he's probably frustrated. I don't. Carson should have asked him about this offense. He could have complained about that, too. Yeah. Could have mentioned that his receivers aren't very good. And, oh, by the way, the Lashley-led offense was a lot easier for me to handle. I didn't have to think so well, much. That's the question if you get Van Dyke for a one-on-one, -on -one, is you simply ask, what did Rhett Lashley mean to your career? Everything. Right. And then see if you can backdoor away into him <laughs> hating on his current staff. I mean, that's how you do it. What do you think about Mario's game management? Do you still stay in touch with Coach Lashley? You know, I spoke with Coach Lashley just before we had you on this week, and he had nothing but high praise for you as a young man and a football player, and uh, he misses his time with you. I, do you ever think about Nate, or have you moved on? Oh, man, I miss him. Oh, you would set it up so easily. You know, I I talked with Nate, and he said that um, – he hadn't been a kid around, been around a kid like you with your your acumen for the game and your ability in a long, long time. And that, you know, hey, business is business. He had to do what he had to do. And Mario comes in there. You you still talk to Nate? You still you call him ever? I mean, the offense. You know. I mostly just call him to vent about stuff, you know, life, things, offense, things like that. You know, <laughs> he's just a great sounding board. He's a great sounding board. It was funny to uh to, to see the frustration on his face and to watch those two teams play with the fact that, uh, given the fact that, uh, obviously, receivers, high caliber, especially at Texas A&M, not exactly lighting it up there uh, mm -hmm. in Aggieland. So that's, that's, that's the real hope here. I get addicted to these quarterback totals. I've already started doing this on prize picks. You know, Virginia has disappointed me to no end, so now I can kind of soft play Brennan Armstrong, who's not doing a damn thing. I can take a good long look. Uh, you talked about the Hartman number. I can't believe it. It's 294 and a half against Clemson's defense, mm. and Wake's offensive line has not been good. Two two numbers early. Now, I haven't bet it yet. We'll, we'll preview this tomorrow like we like to do. But I do want to point out, Sam Hartman has to throw for nearly 300 yard against, yards against Clemson. Um, you could make two arguments. One, they can't block Clemson. That's a fair argument. Therefore, Sam Hartman will not throw for 300 yards. They'll just try to survive the game. The, argue, the other argument is that because they're not going to be able to run the ball, he's going to throw it on every down, mm -hmm. and he may stumble into 300 yards passing. Then the other is Malik Cunningham, who is a good college quarterback. USF, who nearly knocked off Florida, probably should have is not a good football team, despite the fact that they looked, obviously, more than just competitive against Florida. That's the team that got blown out by BYU. Their defense is terrible. Malik Cunningham on prize picks this week, 207 and a half throwing. Now, you can argue they don't need him to throw, that they they're might, just going to run the ball. They might have found something with the James kid, yeah. yeah. And then Malik running as well, of course. So What an interesting game that is, first of all, because you got two teams coming off of crushing losses. For different reasons. USF, it was the underdog trying to score a big upset blow, and then Louisville comes crashing down because, well, that's what we do at Louisville. I think I don't like playing for this head coach anymore. So you've got a quit watch for Louisville against USF, a game that's very sloppy. And then with the Clemson-Wake Forest game, I love everything about that game. The number's only seven, so Vegas has an, has an inkling that it's going to be close. And it's a nooner, a sleepy nooner in Winston-Salem. What a perfect atmosphere well, for Clemson to lay an egg. I can kind of have fun with both of those numbers because DJ, DJU, 220 and a half against Wake's terrible defense. You could check down your way to 221. Could he? Yes. That's the yes, question. Could yes. he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're having trouble dropping 40 on Furman. I think it because you want that to be the case, you're projecting here, Tom. I'm telling I'm you. I'm still mad about the under. You know, I didn't hit that. I didn't 
How do you score, I mean, fewer than 40 points when you've got a stud quarterback that you need to work on? He's waiting in the wings. And you score seven points in the second half on Furman? That's a problem. How many brothers does Tua have? Sweet Jesus. And all these damn Tua's out here. It's crazy. <laughs> Tongue of Iloa's. Tongue of Iloa, yeah, yeah. There's a million of them. Yeah, there's the, the Maryland quarterback, right? And then the, the other defensive player, Bama, and there's somebody else. Yeah, they're, so they're everywhere. Hmm. It's an athletic family. I'm not, I mean, nothing against it, whatever. But I'm just saying, kind of tired of them. It's like the McCaffreys. <laughs> Good God almighty. Another one? Enough. I, I get it. Both his parents were athletes. I get it. Like elite athletes, and his granddad was a damn Olympian. Oh, let's see. So here we go. See? Yeah. Max Johnson, who I correctly predicted would take over the starting job rather quickly at Texas A&M, but Jimbo's offense obviously killing him. It's such a great name. 225. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Brad, well done. Name your kid Max Johnson. 225 and a half. I mean, that'd be that's what a banner day in a Texas AM offense. I think that's what Jimbo uh named it when um Carlos would come out and maybe Timmy Jernigan would be on the field, you know, goal line. <laughs> I love Brad so much. I'm gonna call this the Max Johnson. <laughs> Let's go, Max. Let's go, Max Johnson, right here. We're going Max Johnson. <laughs> you think uh, Judge is going to get it? You think he'll break it? The 61? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's with, he, he might do it tonight. Who knows? Well, it is the Pirates. But he just these things come in bunches for him. I just hope he does it. What game are they on right now? I, I hope he does it in fewer than 154. Be even cooler. That'd huh? be really, yes, because then it just ends all arguments. And it's. It's not about the band box at Yankee Stadium with him. Oh, well, no, he's different. Um, there have been a few. When you're breaking records, you don't like to see the ones that just get out to right center there. Uh, most of the time, he uh, they're rather prodigious. Mm. It's a big man. And uh, the one he turned around on Pittsburgh last night was not a cheapie. However, the Grand Slam walk-off um, was. Giancarlo's was. It was hit hard. It was 119 miles per hour. So the Yankees he didn't miss hit it, but. 147 games. He's going to get a ton of looks at getting to 62 before the 154. And Maris, of course, took the entire season, but still. I have wanted, well, and I would love for somebody to do that in the National League and own the all-time record, not associated with steroids, let's say, as well at some point. But uh, yeah. You'll have a crack at it with the Mets next year. It'll be all right. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Probably not. Even if he did play for the Mets, he wouldn't have a crack at it. Let's do um, let's do probables and chit chat in a second here. Fired up. Let's get our folks from Tallulah going as uh, the Delta Eight floating in the salt, baby. It's time for how you say with the pitching uh, probably. I knew it was coming. I had to wait on it. All of the people that don't get an opportunity to watch this show and instead hear it on the radio. That's awesome that you're listening, but you're missing out on this. What is that thing? It's a hedgehog. A hedgehog. Where do hedgehogs live? Most most critters you've seen at some point in the wild. You've never come across a hedgehog. I've seen it's like Australia. It's just a guess. Director Matthew. Find out where hedgehogs live. I have no idea. Think about it. You've seen otters in the wild, haven't you? I have. Oh yeah. Yeah, growing up in Clearwater. You've seen beavers. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. You've seen raccoons. You've seen sure. badgers. You've seen, well, maybe not badgers. You've seen monkey squirrels, but they've got a different name for them. We learned that when we went golfing in Alabama. I forget what it is. Those oh, well, no wonder I haven't seen a hedgehog. East Africa, West Africa, and Central Africa. All over Africa. Dry sh dry shelters on well-drained soil and a good supply of ground-dwelling insects and other invertebrates. They're adorable. I wish they lived here. I'd scoop one up and love on it. How are you, buddy? All right, let's do these problems. Sorry. That'd be a good team mascot, too. Yeah. Adorable hedgehog. Nats Braves are already in the seventh inning. It's 3-2 to two Washington. Hey! Hey! hey, hey let's hey. go! Nats are hanging in there. Paolo Espino. Bryce Elder. 
Mets Brewers are in the third inning. Nothing, nothing. All right. All right. Tawan Walker, Adrian House. Ooh. <laughs> Red Sox, Reds, Connor Siebold, and Chase Anderson. Astros, Rays, Lance McCullers, Corey Kluber. We got the Cubs and the Marlins tonight. Marcus Stroman, Jesus Lizardo. Blue Jays, Phillies, Kevin Gosman, Zach Wheeler. Tigers, Orioles, Matt Manning, Jordan Lyles. Pirates, Yankees. Roenzi Contreras will do his best. Nice name. Yo, Roenzi's uh, nice, but uh, yeah, we're not a good Luis Severino going for the Yankees. Angels, Rangers, Tucker Davidson, Dane Dunning. Twins, Royals, Baylor, Bailey Ober, Daniel Lynch. Guardians, White Sox, Tristan McKenzie, Lance Lynn, Giants, Rockies, Logan Webb, Herman Marquez. Mariners, A's, Robbie Ray. Hey. James Caparelli. Cardinals, Padres, Miles Mikulins. Yes. Blake Snell. D-backs, Dodgers, Madison Bumgarner. Madison Bumgarner out here, 6-15 and 15 with a 5-plus. It's time, Madison. It's time to call it a day. Go chop wood. Right. <laughs> Grinding femurs to dust with his bare hands. Yeah. Dustin May going to start for the Dodgers, and that is a look at those that shall reside on the bump. I like two. Who was it who had 52 to whatever that was? That was Eric Angel. No. 52 17. Well, you know, it struck me when he said it that. 52 uh, 14. It struck me when he said it that I'd love it because. It has been a minute since we watched a lopsided ass beating right here at Joe Campbell Stadium. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, I guess the easy breeze. Power five team, sure. Good work out of you. Good work, Director Matthew. Be well, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. We'll be back with you on a redemption Thursday. Let's get it. Be good. Wake up, War Chant tonight, 6 p.m.